Hello, this is Eric Wamsley, Systems Engineer with Nutanix. Coming at you with a new video today to discuss thick versus thin provisioning when we're talking about storage. When your hypervisor is ESXi from VMware and you're running, obviously, Nutanix as your backend. I've got a simple 4-node cluster here and you can see it's got just under 15 Tibby bytes of free space and that's, of course, RF2. We'll take a look at it in a second. But the real conundrum is, what is that free space? Especially when we're talking about VMware and you can provision your storage as thick or thin. And you'll notice here when I hover over the storage, you can see that there's about 60 gigs of data already in use because I have a few virtual machines. And Nutanix is nice enough to show us that the use space is calculated by actually consumed data and from disks that are thick provisioned. All right, let's go take a look and see what that actually means. If we go up to the navigation menu, go to storage, and then look at our storage container, we can see that we've got about 52 gigs in use and about 14.8 terabytes of total capacity. If we go over to our vSphere environment and we click on our storage container again, you can see those numbers line up, 50 something gigs and 14.8 something terabytes. And again, back in Prism, you can see the numbers line up. Next, we'll take a look at a virtual machine I created that we'll use for some testing to demonstrate thick versus thin. Right now, this virtual machine is thin provisioned. You can see that here. Here's the disk, thin provisioning, and it's only taken up about 15 gigs of storage. If we go back to Prism, look at the virtual machines. Here's our disk test. It's taken up 15 and a little bit uh, gigs of storage. And if we go back to vSphere, we're going to go ahead and add a disk. So we'll edit the settings, add new disk, I'll change the size to 500 gigs and we'll set it to thin provisioned and we're going to store it with the virtual machine so it's going to go in the same storage container or data store on the VMware side. And We'll hit OK and we can see that that disk gets created pretty much instantly. And there it is, 500 gigs, then provisioned. And you can see storage usage does not go up. If we go back to the data store, you can see the storage space does not go up. If we go to the virtual machine, the storage space does not go up. And if we go to the storage view, the use storage space does not go up because again we are thin provisioning. But if we go into the Windows VM itself, you can see there's my disk. I'll bring it online real quick to show you that it is usable. I'll go ahead and just take the defaults G GPT. And I guess I'll give it a name just so we can remember what we're doing. And Windows formats the drive for us. We can see it shows up. Here we go, just under 500 gigs. If we go back to Prism, we can see nothing changes. If we go back to vSphere, we can see that the virtual machine has the disk, but the storage consumption has not increased. Let's go back to the VM and copy some data around so we can kind of see what the usage is. So I've got this three gig Debian ISO. Let's go ahead and copy it over to the drive real quick. Once that's copied over, we can go back and look at what the real consumption is. And we can see the VM now has three gigs more consumed. We're at 18 and a bit. We can go to the data store, hit refresh. See that it's also gone up by about three gigs. And if we go to Prism, we can see it's also gone up and it matches vSphere, going up by three gigs. The disk type I just showed you is the correct way and the recommended way from Nutanix currently when you're running vSphere as your hypervisor. So that is a thin provision disk and you can make as many as you need. Obviously it's probably not a good idea to go around and just make 50 terabyte thin provision disks for all of your virtual machines and just let your users do whatever they want. So you still should put limits on your disk sizes. But by default, we do recommend that you just do thin provision disk because it doesn't take away storage 
from your other virtual machines. Nutanix is usually expecting everything to be thin provisioned. We do thin provision everything by default on the Nutanix side as well, so that's why we're expecting it. When you do thick provisioned, which I'll show you next, you'll see that it actually does reserve the space for the V disks when you create them. And that can create problems because if you do make several disks that are thick provisioned, but you don't put any data on them, they're still not available to your other virtual machines. So if those VMs never use the space in those V disks, it's still unavailable for the rest of your data center. I went ahead and deleted that 500 gig thin provision disk and I'm gonna make a new one. Let's go ahead and create a new hard drive on this virtual machine. And this time we'll do thick provisioned, but we'll do lazy zero first. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and set this to a couple hundred gigs. So I'll do 750 just so you can kind of see what happens. And again, we're gonna do thick provision lazy zeroed. We'll hit okay. You can say it actually takes a little bit longer to make the disc but it does happen fairly quickly and the storage usage is now 760 gigs and if we go back into disk management we can see the drive is here i'll go ahead and format it real quick give it a cute sexy name And there's our drive, 750 gigs. I'll go ahead and open her up. And if we go to Prism, you can see that we have over 800 gigs now in use. Remember I had about 50 gigs of data, plus we added the 750 gig thick provision disk. So now we've got 800 consumed. If we go back to the home screen, you can see the same thing. We've only got 14 terabytes free. If we go to the VM, let it refresh here. There you go. You can see that it's actually still only consuming 15 gigs, but the total space is 790. And if we even go down to the virtual disk tab, we can see that second disk is there. And just the NTFS data is taking up 3.6 megabytes. But what's happening is Nutanix is reserving the space since you th thick provision the disk. Let's go ahead and copy some data over just like we did before so we can see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and copy this a couple times because I want to make sure it's obvious that even though there is no data except for this three gig file on my disk, all 500, no, all 750 gigs is consumed by Nutanix because we've thick provisioned it because again it's reserving the space for the VMDK so even if you thick provision something and it's not in use it will show up as consumed by Nutanix so you can see here I've copied a couple times I've copied over uh, what 12 gigs it's showing still 800 there it's showing 765 here so that's my 750 plus 15 and then if we go to the data stores, you can see it's 800 gigs here as well. So that's thick provision. Remember a thick provision disk in Nutanix, when it's lazy zero, is still going to consume all the space that you've allocated to the VMDK. So 750 gig thick provision lazy zero disk will take up 750 gigs on the Nutanix platform. If you don't want that, go back to the recommended way, which is to thin provision everything. Okay, and the third disk type that VMware has is thick provisioned eager zero. So I went ahead and I deleted that lazy zero disk that we just played with, and I'm gonna make a 220 gig thick provision eager zero disk so you can see the difference. Uh, one thing with eager zeros is VMware will actually send zeros for all space for the VMDK. So it takes a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed the video up. Boom, the disk is created. All the zeros have been written. Here we go, 220 gigs, thick provision eager zero. We can see our storage usage is 220 plus 15, which is 235 gig. If we go to the actual data store inside of VMware, we can see that it's consuming the data there. And if we go back to Nutanix, we can see the same thing. 
Also fun, we can go to the home screen and we can see that the usage has actually gone down because we went from a 750 to a 220 gig drive, but it is thick provisioned. So since it's thick provisioned, it's reserved. And on the right side in the second column, you can see that VMware actually sent all the zeros when that drive was being created. Nutanix does not write streams of zeros, so all that was suppressed, but it still has to acknowledge it. So it is coming from the hypervisor, going to the CVM, and the CVM is just acknowledging it, but not actually writing anything besides metadata. But you'll still see a spike there in your cluster usage. So what's next? What happens if you clone a VM that has something that, that's thick provisioned and compare that to something that's thin provisioned? So that's what we'll do next. I'll go ahead and clone a virtual machine and just kind of show you what happens. Back in vSphere, if we go ahead and clone our WinDisk test VM that's got the thick provision drive on it, give it another cute name, go to next, select my cluster, Go to next, select the storage. I'm going to keep the format the same. Select my storage container. I'm not going to do anything special here and go ahead and hit finish. It kicks off the clone and you can see it's going to take a minute. Instead of watching that clone out with its thick provision disk, what happens if we go ahead and clone out a thin provision VM? So here is my other template that's got a thin provision disk. We'll go ahead and clone it out, give it a name, select my resource. Make sure I correct, select the correct uh, storage container slash data store. I'm going to leave it same format as disk, as a source rather, since it's then provisioned. And we can see that it's actually completed. And I did not actually speed this up, so what you just saw while I was talking about cloning the thin provision was real time. It does take about a second to clone a virtual machine when you're thin provisioning on Nutanix because we have some secret sauce on the back end. And because you're doing thin provisioning, there's no extra disk to write, no storage to provision, anything like that. So that's the two big differences that you'll see. You know, the thick provision lazy zero, thick provision eager zero, they behave the same. Minus obviously the eager zero is going to head and it's going to write all the zeros. But Nutanix does suppress those streams of zeros. When you thin provision something, only the actually consumed storage space is shown as consumed inside Nutanix. Nutanix does recommend that you do a thin provision disk. Now if we talk real quick about history, it did seem that in the past, when you were running traditional three-tier architecture or even just flat disks on local hard drives, that if you did thin provision versus thick provision, that the thick provision would perform better. There were also some software manufacturers that would recommend to their customers that they eager zero disks. Um, there may be some use cases, like uh, typically with Windows clustering, they recommend you do that. But when we're talking about Nutanix, you should pretty much always do a thin provision unless there's an extreme use case. And there are no performance benefits on the Nutanix platform when you're talking thick versus thin. They perform exactly the same. The downside to thick provisioning is you're thick provisioning something. So it's going to reserve all that space on the Nutanix side. So you'll run out of disk space faster. And you could potentially actually hurt yourself because if you've got a drive that's pretty much empty or even half used, you're not able to use the other space with your other virtual machines. So go ahead and thin provision all your disks. When you migrate to Nutanix, you want to make sure you convert all your disks to a thin provision disk. We have had customers that they do the migration process and they just leave everything the same and then they're like, hey, I'm out of space already. Why is that so? And you go back and you look and it's like, well, because everything's thick provisioned and we only looked at your actual consume numbers. Again, please thin provision all of your disks when you're using ESXi as the hypervisor on Nutanix, unless you have a specific use case. I hope this was helpful, especially actually seeing it in use. Let me know if you have any questions.